Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll be looking into nitrogen and phosphorus cycle which is part of the nutrient cycle topic in the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So first looking at why we need nitrogen and phosphorus. So nitrogen is needed for amino acids, uh, protein synthesis and also DNA and RNA. And phosphorus is also needed for ATP synthesis uh, DNA, RNA and NADP production and it's also involved in the phospholipid bilayer. So I'm going to start off by looking at the nitrogen cycle. So first I'll go through the cycle uh, and then we can look at the mark points. Um, so we, we're, go we're going to start with uh, nitrogen being present in plants. It's a cycle we can start from anywhere but for the purpose of this video uh, we're going to start with nitrogen and being on in, in those plants so this could be in the form of amino acids proteins uh, in in the dna so we have nitrogen in that plant and what happens is that nitrogen and uh, that plant will be eaten by animals so those consumers will feed on that producer and the nitrogenous compounds will be transferred uh, to the animals now so from then so these animals can will die and decay they they will also excrete so they'll excrete their urea as well as their feces and that will also contain nitrogen and what would happen from there is we have uh, these bacteria uh, special decomposers called saprobionts so that's a key ter that's a key uh, term that you need to be aware of so saprobionts will decompose these uh, these uh, nitrogenous base so for example if there's amino acids um, or proteins they will break them uh, down into smaller uh, subunits and this would eventually form um, ammonia or, or just ammonium uh, ammonium compounds and this is called ammonification so just in the name and we form ammonia so nh3 but this can also be formed directly from the plant. So the plant could also die and decay. And again, the saprobionts will be responsible for the ammonification of that, turning um, the nitrogen, uh, nitrogenous compounds from the plants to um, NH3, and then that could be in the soil. So from then, so we have that NH3 in the soil, and we can convert that into nitrites. So uh, this would usually have the charge NO2 minus. So this is through these bacteria called nitrifying bacteria. So these are nitrifying bacteria and this process is called uh, nitrification. So we're adding these oxygens into it. Um, this is oxidation um, and this is done by nitrifying bacteria. So we have formed these nitrites now. And from then, what would happen is we would further oxidize using the same bacteria. So we again have those same nitrifying bacteria. And again, it's the same process of nitrification. And we end up forming nitrates this time. So uh, this, is, this would usually be uh, NO3 minus there. Uh, and these would be our uh, nitrates. So these are our nitrates. And what could happen is these nitrates um, can be absorbed uh, by active trans transport by the root hair cells in the plant. Uh, and this is our whole little cycle going on. So we would end up gaining those nitrogen compounds in plants. So uh, this is a whole complete cycle and you can be asked about this cycle you, most of the questions that have come up uh, are usually about this cycle but also there's also other parts to this cycle which we'll be looking onto now. So when we have that nitrates it doesn't always go end up in the plant. What could happen is we we have these bacteria called denitrifying bacteria. So denitrifying uh, so nit so when we nitrify something, we're basically adding oxygen to it. So denitrifying bacteria would remove that oxygen. So we would be reducing and uh, that by removing the, those oxygen. And this process would be called denitrification. So from that atmospheric nitrogen in the um, in the atmosphere, we could 
go back to nitrates, NO3 minus, and this is done by lightning. So when lightning strikes, and these um, atmospheric nitrogen can be converted into nitrates, and this process is called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation, and also we could go directly from the atmospheric nitrogen to the ammonia by nitrogen fixation. So we add hydrogen to this, um, and this is done by nitrogen uh, fixing bacteria. Make sure you know all of these steps really well. Um, you should be able to, f from if you have, if you're given the name of the bacteria, you should be able to um, be able to tell what process it is. It shouldn't be too hard, as most of them have very similar names. Now I'm going to be looking into the mark points of the nitrogen cycle. Make sure you know this really well. So, so we again, so we're starting from the nitrogen. So we have the nitrogenous compound uh, found in the plant. So this could be amino acid proteins. And what happens is absorption of it occurs by the by the animals, by the consumers. So the consumers would feed and digest that plant. So this would transfer the nitrogen from the plant to the consumer. And then the plants and animals would die and decompose. And also the animals would excrete nitrogenous waste, so feces and urea. And what happens is these um, the ammonification would occur. So what happens is these saprobionts, so um, these decomposing bacteria, uh, would break down the proteins and amino acids and release ammonia into the soil. So we form ammonia. Um, you can also refer to this as ammonium compounds. Um, but but ammonia is usually fine. So then nitrification occurs. So the ammonia is oxidized to nitrites. So we end up gaining oxygen. So that's why it's called um, oxidation. And this is done by nitrifying bacteria. And then the same, we all, again, we have this nitrification occurring again. Um, so these nitrites we have formed would be oxidized further to nitrates now, and this is also done by nitrifying bacteria. Um, and then we could absorption of it could occur, so we the, the nitrates we have formed could be absorbed by the plant, uh, by the root, uh, the, the, by the plant root hair cells via active transport. So this would be the through the root, and these nitrates which are which could be found in the soil would be absorbed uh, into the plant. And then denitrif denitrification could occur. So when we have those nitrates, um, these nitrates could be converted to nitrogen gas uh, by denitrif denitrifying bacteria. So we'd be losing um, oxygen there as this would just form N2, which is the atmospheric nitrogen. So the opposite could happen. So when lightning strokes, uh, we can convert the nitrogen gas from the atmosphere to nitrates uh, by nitrogen fixation. Uh, and we could also directly from the atmospheric nitrogen, we could form um, we could form ammonia. So those ammonium compounds by nitrogen fixation again. Uh, and this is done by nitrogen uh, fixing bacteria. And this would be reducing um, the nitri atmospheric nitrogen as we are ha adding hydrogen to Okay, so now looking into the phosphorus cycle. So this again is a cycle. We can start from anywhere, but for this particular video, we'll just start from phosphates, um, which are present in rocks. So we have rocks and we have phosphates inside them. So what happens is we have erosion and weathering uh, occurring. So this would just transfer, so just, just break down the rock uh, and so from the phosphates which are present inside the rock would be dissolved uh, so in inside oceans, lakes and soils. So soils is what we're focusing on right now. So, so from the soils what would happen is absorption of those phosphate ions would occur. So the plants uh, could absorb these phosphate ions. So this could be used um, for example in ATP, um, in the phospholipid bilayer, DNA, and lots of other uses. 
and so we have that phosphate ion uh, in plants and then from there uh, the feeding and digestion would occur so the consumer would feed on these plants and usually the animals um, and um, yeah so the, there's a transfer of phosphate ions from the plants to the animals so the animals that we have present um, they could uh, they could die and then decomposition would occur and they could also urinate um, and also excrete uh, feces and this could transfer the uh, the phosphate ions so in the soils by for example if the and the animal died in in, in the land and decompo decomposers would decompose that and we would have phosphate ion, ions present in the soils but if the animal decides to urinate in a lake uh, we could have the dissolved phosphate ions being transferred to, to the lake so we would have phosphate ions being transferred back um, to where we got it from and then what could happen is sedimentation and deposition could occur so we so the dissolved phosphate ions um, could deposit together so they would they would accumulate together and they would end up forming sedimentary rocks i'll i'll go through that in more detail in a bit but this this would basically end up forming rocks again uh, and we have the cycle uh, completed and j just to note these phosphate ions uh, ions which are present in plants because plants could also die and um, then this could be de decomposed as well and that could um, so this could also add the phosphate ions into the soil okay so now looking at the mark points of the phosphorus cycle so we have weathering and erosion of rocks occurring breaking down uh, those rocks and causing phosphate ions to dissolve into the water systems and soils so for example this is our rock and this has uh, phosphates in it so we would have weathering and erosion occurring you don't really need to know how they how these happen um, but just imagine that there's water coming through um, and this basically weakens the rock and breaks it down into smaller pieces so these and this just means that these smaller uh, these smaller rocks could dissolve in the water um, and it could also end up in soil um, as dissolved phosphate ions so then these phosphate ions could be absorbed by the plant so this could be used um, for example for protein synthesis um, so making proteins as well as uh, for DNA um, and phospholipid bilayer um, and the consumers would feed on these uh, plants and digest the plants and the phosphate ions would be passed down on food chain so so from the producers to the consumers and then we could also have consumers feeding on consumers feed which would uh, which would digest these um, phosphate ions and these would be passed down and then the plants and animals would die and also plants would i mean uh, animals would excrete waste containing phosphate ions and so in the urea as well as feces which would be released back into the soil of water by decomposers so when we have plants and animals dying and uh, they will have phosphate inside of them which could uh, be broken down so when the decomposers would act th this could be broken down so for example when a protein uh, might be broken down by the decomposers it would contain phosphates ions which will be released back into the soil or, or water uh, and then the phosphate ions could form sedimentary rocks by deposition or sedimentation so what we mean by that for example the phosphate ions which have ended up in and uh, the water systems uh, could accumulate together so we have these um, these rocks this li little rocks uh, containing the phosphate ions and more and more would keep coming so uh, we have addition of more phosphate I have more rocks containing these phosphates and these would just accumulate together and over time these would just end up forming the rock again and the process um, could carry on so again we would have the weathering and erosion occurring 
and then this would just repeat again and this is the phosphorus cycle so now looking at the mycorrhizae um, so this is basically the relationship between fungi uh, and plants so in this relationship what happens is the the fungi would improve the water and iron uptake by um, by in plants but the fungi would also benefit uh, and so what would happen is the mycorrhizae which they have very long and deep roots so for example and uh, this is with mycorrhizae and this is without mycorrhizae so as you can see mycorrhizae have these deep roots so that means that the plant would uh, have access to much deeper area so it could end up gaining more and uh, nutrients and water so yeah so fungi would extend the plant root surface area for increased absorption of this water and water and um, ions so such as phosphate ions or uh, nitrogen um, so nitrogen ions and which the plant really needs but this this is a mutualistic relationship so both plants and fungi are benefiting as because the plant would received uh, the water and the ions which um, which the fungi will help with as it, there would be a greater surface area reached in for example as you can see in the picture and fungi would also uh, receive the organic molecule so uh, when the plant would photosynthesize it would produce for example sugars and fungi would need that to survive so fungi would end up gaining those organic molecules uh, and like this both of them would benefit and this is called a mutualistic relationship and this type of um, mutualistic relationship is called a micro mycorrhizae you just need to be aware of this thank you so much for watching this video if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up thank you